so far I've released two music videos for my band Beneath Vultures. The first one was Blood and Water. Uh, that is a song that I really wanted to start out with as sort of a, a good mid-tempo, uh, middle ground song to, to sort of set the tone of the band. And the music video was a great chance for me to play a little bit with camera techniques and lighting and just kind of get used to the idea of what it's going to be like to self-produce at a, at a greater level than what I've been doing on my channel so far. The next song, Cocoon, was something that, again, self-produced, but I spent a lot more time mapping it out uh, working on special effects, makeup, um, getting a lot more of a theatrical feel. And I think to some extent I achieved that and I wanted to, to walk you through the process of creating that video, the special effects I used, the camera techniques, lighting techniques, in assuming that this is something that you might be interested in doing if you're looking to film something more theatric than just, you know, sitting here with your instrument playing. Okay, so there is a lot to cover here. Uh, this is a video that was made at my house. I had to make decisions on lighting, practical effects, uh, you know, how the, the video is going to translate the music. So all these things have to come together to give something that's visually appealing and sort of cohesive. So I'm going to run and gun this as fast as I can, but there's a lot to cover here and it might be a little drawn out if you can just stick with me. I think uh, it'll be a lot of fun and if you're kind of new to uh, video production or just interested in the concept of doing something a little more than just sitting in front, in front of your camera, uh, I think you'll learn a little bit here. So let's take a look. The uh, intro to the video, let's, let's start with that. So you can see this kind of liquid latex that I had that was dried out and then I had some gunk that was sitting on top of it and that, that kind of gave it this really cool little um, flowing, nasty alien vibe. And then the, uh, the main wall here that you're seeing is the first shot of um, the full set that I built. And the reason why I love this is because it shows what practical effects can do. And this is such a leap forward from, in, at least in my opinion, um, ironically enough, from doing something like green screen and adding like backgrounds and whatnot in post. It just, this gives you a lot more option here. This is a perfect example of something that would be very incredibly difficult to do in post. I've got, you know, depth to tracking down the side of the wall. Um, and, you know, I've got different layers here that are, that are, that are in this shot. Um, and then there's a great example of how I had to think through um, fog, you know, how is that going to affect the uh, the look of the camera? So in, I really wanted the fog to stay low and I had to make sure that the fog stayed cool. So I had to run the fog through dry ice basically is what I did. I ran the fog out through dry, uh, uh, cooler with dry ice and onto the, uh, the floor of the little cocoon set that I built. Uh, but all that kind of stuff sort of comes together to give you this like really believable um, environment and that's really what the goal is is to suspend disbelief as much as possible you know given a reasonable budget now that we've got a basic concept of what it looked like let's take a look at you know some of the files some of the um, uh, footage that it took to make this happen including maybe some behind the scenes on what it took to build out that uh, set so what you're looking at here is the main folder there that I kept all of my footage and I've just got everything sort of separated out by the type of shot that it was. Whether it, Was it a, a background that was just me singing um, as sort of a filler or aesthetically pleasing secondary shot? Or was it the guitar shots that I also wanted to kind of keep as a secondary shot? I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time focusing on performance because if I do that then it sort of takes away from the interest of the main um, storyline or the or the plot device of this music video but at the same time I want to keep that connection to the music so that's why I have the guitar shots and the vocal shots in there and I opted to not have any other instruments it just seemed like it was a little overkill for as much as I was trying to cram into one short little music video. Latex Stretch is a folder that I keep all of my footage for the shot where the hand is coming up through the latex and pushing out uh, all the goo kind of streams down when, when it pushes and it gives it a really cool little effect. 
um, as well, you know, I've got a ton of footage of the purple room is what I was calling it, the, uh, the cocoon. This is really cool because I had a couple different cameras here. I was, I was running just a cell phone camera on a gimbal that would give me a really live feel to the camera that um, I wasn't getting with my primary camera that, that, I, that I use for most of my music video footage. And which, by the way, I will put a list of my equipment in the uh, description of this video. Uh, but basically what I ended up doing was I had someone else help me, my wife helped me with uh, the footage where it had to be handheld on the gimbal um, and then I had a uh, an automated uh, electronic slider type of camera movement that was happening on the shots where it was just you know the our my my main camera and I wanted it to sort of be like a slow tracking so that's how that all came together. Uh, back here, uh, also I've got test footage, which is what I jumped in here a second ago. This is probably the most important set of footage that I have for this music video or honestly for any music video or project that I'm doing that requires a bit of planning. Once I got past the basic um, concept, I started playing with, you know, building out sets and whatnot. I wanted to spend some time um, really dialing in the, the tone of the shots and the coloring and the look and feel. As you can kind of see here in this preview, I had started out this is all sequential. I started out with the green look and I was kind of getting an idea what that would look like. Uh, we can even just click in here real quick. So this is just me sitting down, just trying to get a feel of what it would look like if I was if I was in front of a green, yeah, I know we're wearing shorts, shut up, <laughs> a green background. And eventually I settled on purple. That just seemed to be a, pop a little more. Um, as well as some stuff like this where, pardon my mess, you can kind of see this panning shot that gives you a good idea of what it looked like when I first finished everything. So you can see the, uh, you know, the depth of the, the shot, but also some of the surrounding stuff that, you know, that, that was around the set and how that all came together, if that makes any sense, kind of. Um, and I took some pictures just so I could see what skin color would look like up against this. So I really felt out the vibe of every angle or every type of shot that I wanted to f get. Um, and I even went as far as digging into some of the um, uh, gimbal shots and stuff early. And you'll notice that that becomes important uh, when I show you this next shot because you will start to see um, the potential for the camera going over the background and catching some of the the background of the you know the garage that we were filming in and that can really ruin a great shot let's jump over here so what you're looking at now is the first wall that I was building these walls were just painters um, tarp that plastic painters tarp then I spread liquid latex over top of it liquid latex is a uh, I, I love that material and it seems to be a common theme in this video. So I spread that over top of it along with a little bit of paint and then I peeled holes into the liquid latex to give it sort of like that alien cocoon vibe, whatever, you know. You have to kind of use your imagination here. Um, and when I did that, I kind of left the plastic as it was so I could have that kind of hazed over look on top of that. So let's quickly jump into this and this is a great shot because you can kind of see what it took to put this all together and I know this is super fast but we're probably talking about a week's worth of work after everything was said and done to get these walls up probably even more than that now I think about it I had two primary sheets that I created and those were the ones that were you know in the forefront or I should say in the background the most uh, with light shining behind them and then there were a couple extra on the side and on the floor just to kind of fill it out that I didn't take so much time on and you can see that I, I'm spending some time digging through um, behind there to, to set up lights and, and get an idea of what it's going to look like before I start building a frame for it. And then I built a PVC frame that I had uh, arched to give it that dome shape, that circular shape that gives you a um, that sort of claustrophobic vibe, but still gives you a lot of space to work in. And that was all very, very difficult to to attach and keep attached and whatnot. Eventually, I let me back up here. I opted to uh, add some stuff on the front of this, 
and I ended. I, I tried to make it a little, little bit Geiger esque, where it had a lot of, uh, you know, lines and separation uh, to to give it some dimension, and that did work out pretty well, actually, a little better than I thought it was going to. So here, um, you can see that I'm spending, or I'm just kind of trying to tear through, uh, making the the sides and the floor as fast as possible because I already spent like a week at that point, I think, uh, building the first two walls, putting that all up, putting some backdrops behind it so I didn't get light bleed. And then, you know, this shot shows what it looks like um, with some different colors. Uh, then the fog was a huge part of this. I wanted to make sure that, you know, it was, it was present, but it wasn't in your face. So I had to run it through dry ice. It kind of kept it low to the ground until it started to heat up and then it would, you know, I'd have to air out and start the whole process again. So all those things you have to really think through because on day of shoot, when you go to use something like fog, you realize that, oh, it's now, you know, overtaking my shot and everything looks hazy. And then a lot of, a lot of times your footage is junk. This is a great shot here. I was really happy with, this is the first shot that I think I was, I really saw it come together. So um, I just, what I did was I, I set up the camera, set up the lighting, the fog, exactly how I was hoping it would come together. And I just kind of sat there and, and checked out what the skin tones would look like. Um, the, you know, the brightness of the shot, what needed to be adjusted. I did make a few other adjustments after that, but this gave me a good, um, clear indication of, you know, kind of what, what I would be expecting. Um, and then this is a, a gimbal shot where I just had a phone on a gimbal and you can definitely tell the, the colors are a little more harsh. The, um, the focus is a little different. I'm not quite as happy with the coloring on the shot in the, just the movement, but it, it was effective and I don't really think that it, it took away too much from the look of the video. It's got a bit of a fisheye look to it more so than my uh, my traditional camera, the video camera that I use for everything, but it still works. A lot of things I wanna point out here. If you look here, you can kinda of see some of the material that I use to make these, the, the shininess. It takes you out of the moment of the, the video. So I spent a lot of time on camera angles and to try to minimize the amount of that kind of stuff that you see. Because even though you know it's lower budget and, and you don't expect it to be perfect, you still want to have you that suspension of disbelief. You don't want to give someone, you know, this this amazing environment and have something completely unnecessary uh, sticking out at them that makes them realize, oh, I'm watching this you know home created music video or whatever. Um, <laughs> So this is another great shot and a great example of why it's so important. So if you look up here, these are the types of things you have to look for when you are vetting out your shots. You have to make sure that you know what your boundaries are that you're shooting so you don't have to come in here and post and, and zoom in right on the edge so you can cut that out and then you end up losing quality. It just becomes a big mess. You try to avoid that as much as possible. By the way, this video that we're looking at right now will be up on my social media account if it is not already. Um, so you can kind of see this. It's just a quick little two minute or so video that, that gives you a nice little overview of how all this kind of stuff came together. That's my wife. Uh, she's helping do all the shooting and, and whatnot on the uh, handheld shots, like I said. So you'll notice here I've, I'm spending some time with some automated lights. And yeah, I, you know, I did just have to kind of just go buy all this stuff. I I realized that I'm not going to have a team of people. I decided I was just going to go for it and I, and I bought lighting and I got MIDI um, to DMX connections and I actually had things programmed to operate at a particular time in the song and that's a whole other discussion for another video but that's the kind of stuff that sometimes you have to do if you're working on a small team or a one-man team and you want you know that next level of production in your in your video. These shots, um, this was a little earlier, actually. This is a little out of sequence. I think I did one of these first. I was trying to get an idea of what some of the vocal shots and to fill out the, fill out the video. Um, a lot of this was just seeing what looked cheesy, what looked good, what looked too similar to the last music video that I did, which was, you know, I would, is definitely a step back as, as far as uh, 
production value, but it was a good starting point. But there's a lot of this that I was noticing looked very similar to that last video since it was in a similar environment and I was trying to stay away from that. This is a great little shot right here because you can see what one light can do. You know, just one single light change, now I've, I've got two different dimensions. Whether you like those dimensions or not, that's, you know, that's up for debate, but it just gives you a, an idea of, you know, the, the different uh, tones you can get with just a simple black background and lighting. And that's, that's why that kind of stuff is really exciting. You spend a lot of time playing with it. This is another great example kill the lights on the front and then suddenly you've got a really moody look you know that that sort of sets a completely different tone even though it's the same set same camera angle everything i also had the camera on a slider that i was telling you about earlier and that was turned out to be more trouble than it was worth because i ended up having to chase basically the camera uh, as i was performing uh, because you know every now and then it would get a little too far over and you would see the light uh, the light bulb on the on the w one far end and I ended up having to basically trash a lot of that footage So again, it's things that you have to think through and hopefully you get it right And if you don't you sometimes have to reshoot and I've had to do that This is a cool little shot of the when I let when I did let the fog rise purposely for these particular shots um, What what they were doing to the the lighting in the background the moving lighting and this Hello. <laughs> um, gotta love still shots, right? So this is the result of that. So after add adding all that fog, um, being very careful with how much fog and where the fog was was a hard part of this. But I did that and I was able to get this really cool smoky vibe behind that. And the same thing with the purple uh, background pink or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the same shot, just different colors, and spent a lot of time, you know, clearing out the fog and re resetting constantly. And this is where we start getting into the main uh, cocoon set. And there was tons. You see, I've got just some work lights there. I do have, you know, a lot of um, a lot of set lights that that are purpose built for um, videography and photography. Uh, but you know, you, I needed some fill lights, and those uh, about <laughs> I about used every light I had in the house. So at that point, I had to just kind of use what I had. It's me and my wife kind of doing some test shots and whatnot. Um, this is a really important shot, even though it looks kind of goofy. Uh, we're, we're framing everything out in, you know, in the moment of recording. We're, we're saying, hey, you know, this is working, this is not working. Um, what do we need to do differently um, when movement's happening, when the camera's moving, when I'm moving? Uh, so those types of shots, even though you can prep for them a lot, you still have to be a little flexible at the time of shooting. <laughs> All right, I guess I'll just focus on this for a second. Nothing beats the rolling, the mortgage payment for a rolling drum set. Oh, YouTube, love you. <laughs> and that's me falling. <laughs> so. You know, this, is take, this just takes a lot of coordination if you've got multiple people working with you. And then eventually you get shots like that. If we go back here and take a look at uh, this, this is you know, in my, one of my more favorite shots. Of, obviously we just get a little tiny clip of it, but you, you can see the camera rising with the, with the fog and the pulsing lights. Everything is sort of like timed in a, in a way that keeps you sort of you know, engrossed in that scene and it makes it makes every little element makes it a little more believable. I know that this is a lot of really long winded um, explanations, but I don't really know how else to get this across without giving you an idea of what it took to make something like this happen. And that just takes a lot of detail. Quick little recap that I had, but it did not have any clips of the latex stretch stuff. So let me pull that out here. This was really fun, but it was very difficult to, this is one that I really wish I had another person here when I was doing it. Um, you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of pushing up through this nasty stuff that I have and it gives that nice little vibe. I actually took a frame, um, wrapped it in saran wrap, then covered it in latex, 
liquid latex, let that all dry, and peeled off the saran wrap, and I was left with this really cool, extremely stretchable surface. And the I got the idea from this. If you've ever seen Nightmare on Elm Street, you've seen this push through. I know that they did it a lot more low tech than I did actually. I think they used a sheet and pushed through it. So that's that's how that all came together. I don't come up with everything myself. I'm not that creative. Uh, so yeah, that was a really fun little shot. And then once I finally busted through it, which I meant to do, it ended up not at, uh, being in the final video. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense. But um, I decided to shoot a couple last minute shots, which did end up getting in the video. And that's what this is. And you can see my hand busting through it a little bit here. It's fun stuff. I could just watch this all day. It's just so nasty. How I use lighting. That's something we should probably talk through a little bit. Lighting is the, by far, don't let anyone tell any, any different. It's not the camera. It's not the um, performers. <laughs> it's not, it's just not. Getting a great shot to start with is the light. You can make or break a shot with bad lighting. You can have an amazing performance. You can have an amazing set, but if you don't have the right light, it's just not going to come together. To do this, I don't really have a whole lot of video footage of this in particular, but what I did was I I put a bunch of lighting uh, behind this, colored lighting behind the big cocoon area. Let's see if we can pull that up actually in the main music video. So those there's five or six LED lights that are set facing that to give to bounce off of that plastic and give that glow look. And then I had the two at the top that I left for the entire set that were pulsing up and down that gave that pulse look. And then I kind of used that same concept for the rest of the, the lighting. I, I used the same color schemes. I made sure that, you know, I was, I was trying to hit, you know, a basic three point light anytime there was a, a face shot or a full body shot or something like that. Um, to make sure that, you know, there wasn't too many harsh shadows, but at the same time, I didn't want it to be too overblown. Lighting is just really something that made this video what it is, whether you like it or not, you know, it's, I, it was very purposeful. This is another great example of um, what you can, what that type of light movement alone can accomplish. So there's, n there's no movement here on the camera. The camera's absolutely still doesn't look like it though because we've got fog moving, we got light moving, I'm moving. The the it's a very live shot. Everything looks like it's in motion and that is what you're going for. You're look, you're going for interesting and something that's going to engage the user or the user, the the watcher. By the way, I'll put all my equipment down that I have that I can dig up down in the description um, so you can kind of get an idea of what I'm using equipment wise. Uh, but again, you know, a lot of this is about planning and just using what you have to to its most potential more so than the specific equipment that I'm using. Okay, and I could go on for days about nuances of, you know, how things were shot or, or how a camera angle was set up, but, but I think it's probably would be a little more effective and honestly probably more entertaining to just kind of click through the video and have like a couple final points about the shots and if anything comes up uh, you know maybe we'll we'll stop and dive into it okay so i'm gonna stop it i know i just got about one second in but so this shot here is i really like this shot because i've got a piece of that um that background that i have the cocoon stuff and i put it in front of the camera and i've got my electronic slider that basically is moving in and out um really close to it to give that nice depth to look like we're kind of looking through one of the walls so that that fourth wall is being sort of peered through so that's how that came together there is a teeny tiny bit of overlay in post-production to just grit up the the film a little bit or the you know the footage a little bit but I didn't do a lot of that so you might see a couple flashes of this or that or, or the lighting flicker or something like that and th that was done in post but not by any means was that something that I relied on it's almost all this whole entire video is just in camera all um, practical effect a lot of this was just luck so these shots back here the focusing in and out I left it on autofocus and I just I figured that it would just have trouble finding me 
uh, finding focus on me and, and, and then focusing out and notice that Canon's uh, autofocus is great. It like, it really locks in and then it loses it and locks in again. So it looks human in the way that it, uh, that it pulls focus. Oh, these are some of my favorite shots. So the, the shaky cam thing gets a bad rap, right? Uh, in, in movies and it gets overused in music videos, but there's a reason because it works. It creates a frantic feeling and a feeling of energy. Sometimes it's just necessary. Sometimes it really does help. And you can see it in this shot right here. And in case you're not familiar with how you achieve that look, that you have to, first of all, you have to have an optical zoom on your camera. So you can't just use your, well, I mean, you can use your phone and you're not gonna get really the same effect unless you just, you're really good at framing a shot out. But um, simply zooming in handheld will give you that naturally shaky feel because the camera is so, you know, is zoomed so far into something that every movement that you make it's felt on the camera. Even if it's just the smallest movement, it, it can really feel it. And then that also creates a, a depth of field between the subject and the background. Now, as far as your camera settings go, you know, there's ISO settings and uh, shutter speed and stuff like that that you have to consider. All stuff for, you know, another discussion or, but the point being, th all, all these types of shots really take is just some preparation and testing and then you can get shots like this. And uh, while you know, I I'm definitely don't consider myself an amazing videographer, I, there are some of these shots that I really am proud of um, and I'm, I'm glad I spent the time on them that I did. And I also wanna point out, by the way, uh, that I've got these cool contacts. They are like mini scleras. So if you're getting freaked out by the size of my eyes, no, those are not my real eyeballs. And stuff like this is fun because, you know, it just had a lot of different motion going on. And then you sort of, you know, choreograph that in with the music. And that's how you get those kinds of fun little jerks and jumps that, that go along with the song. And this one, I could have, I think I could have framed this a little better had I spent more time connecting the latex stretch hand shots with the cocoon shots. Uh, that's something that I didn't really think about when I was shooting the two, how they would all connect together. So this right here, it works to an extent, but you know, given a little uh, more time and, and foresight, I, I would have uh, made this a little more cohesive together. Still turned out pretty cool though. This is where it starts to get fun too, pushing through on those walls, getting those, that kind of interaction with the background, um, you know, get, leveraging the fact that we've got practical effects to work with. And as far as the focus goes on all this, when you see the focus going in and out of focus, that's my wife actually pulling focus manually on the camera. Okay, for some reason, for some reason that's like my favorite guitar shot of the entire video. I don't know why. It's just that little slide that's super fun. But I think that wraps this up. So, and we could go down all sorts of rabbit holes with, you know, the technical aspects of how how my cameras are set up or what, you know, what specific settings I'm using, what lighting I'm using, framing of my shots. Uh, but I really wanted to just kind of give an overview of what it takes to, to storyboard out and just, you know, kind of push something from concept all the way to production on this. And hopefully I gave you some kind of idea of what that was, even if, you know, maybe I'm not answering every single question you have. But if you do have some questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I love talking about this stuff. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions through messages, however you want to. So uh, until the next video, guys, thank you again for watching and see you next time.